Okay, as we get into playboating basics, let's cover a few fundamental rules that are critical for the entire video, in fact, for the rest of your paddling career. Number one, always lead every turn with your body. Now in playboating, almost every move you do is a turn. Whether you're spinning in a hole, on a wave, doing a cartwheel, doing a blunt, or an advanced playboating, doing a helix. Every move you do, you need to lead with your body. At the end of every stroke, if you're not leading the turn with your body, you're not able to look where you're going. You're also not able to take your next stroke quickly. The next key concept is simply spotting your target. That is looking where you're going. Unfortunately, almost every kayaker by default looks over their bow. But in playboating, your bow is almost never pointed at the target. Instead, you need to think of your head to be completely free to move back and forth and look wherever you're going next. If you're turning to the left, then you need to have your eyes and your head pointed to where you want your boat to go next. Simple as that. The last concept we're going to discuss here is keeping your weight over your boat. Keeping your weight over your boat means that you're always balanced. Always being balanced means you don't need to brace. This is critical in playboating. Why? Because you need to have the paddle free to do the maneuvers you're trying to do. If you have to brace, it means your weight's not over the boat. The lean clean is simply learning to transfer your weight and the edges of your boat in a way that allow the boat to go vertical. This is an edge control exercise that is absolutely critical for all of your playboating that has to do with getting vertical. You start with the lean clean by learning how to get the stern underwater. How do you do it? You drop an edge, put some weight on your stern, and your stern goes under. But what you really want is the stern to scoop. To get that scoop, you need to drop your edge, lean back, and lift your edge. Now what happens? Notice your boat turns. Your next step is do the same thing on your bow. You drop your edge on your bow, put weight on your bow, the bow goes under. You lift the edge quickly, it scoops out the other side. Now for it to work, you need to do that edge transfer very quickly. What do I mean by that? Lean back on your stern, drop your edge, lift the stern almost immediately. If you wait too long, the stern bobs out the way it came. Now what are you looking for ultimately? How do you know when your lean clean is going well? You can link the bow and stern together. What does that look like? Ultimately those are flat water cartwheels with no paddle. When you first look at this, you may think this is an advanced move, but in fact you can learn this extremely easy and this is the shortest cut you've got to learning to get your boat vertical in flat water, in holes, or even on waves. Alright, we're ready to start with our play boating moves. The first thing we want to learn how to do is to get your boat vertical, and we're going to learn how to do it in flat water. Why? Because if you can get the bow under in flat water or the stern under in flat water, then you can do all the vertical moves in the white water as well. The first and easiest way to get vertical in flat water is what's called the plowing ender. To get the boat moving, you need at least five, six, or seven hard strokes. What you're trying to do is create a wake behind you. Now put all of your weight on your feet and start driving your boat hard again. Your bow should be underwater, and if you keep driving and keep the boat straight and flat, the bow will go all the way down until you're dead vertical and fall over on your head. All right, this next technique for getting vertical in flat water is going to be one of your most important. This technique, which is called the double pump, is your first step to cartwheeling. Think of the double pump as a hammer. You lift a hammer up and then you slam it down. You have to lift it up to get the momentum to slam down to hit the nail. The same is true with the double pump. The goal is to lift the bow up so that you can slam it down into the water so the momentum coming down allows you to get the bow all the way under. In order for the double pump to work, number one, you need to keep your weight over the boat. Number two, you need to lift the bow up. You lift the bow up by dropping your edge about 30 degrees, putting your paddle in the forward sweep position, and sweeping the bow up in the air. In order for the bow to rise, you need to be thinking about lifting up on your knees as well. Once the bow's up, you switch to the back sweep and you immediately push the bow down. But this time you need to drop the edge more. You need to drop the edge to about 60 degrees so that edge slices into the water and you will have succeeded in getting vertical. Think of your boat as a knife. The edge along your boat, that's the knife's edge. It, you cannot hit the hull of your boat flat against the water, otherwise you just slap the water and the water resistance will prevent you from getting vertical. The next most important key is that your weight's over the boat. You'll know this right away. If your weight's not over the boat, you'll be doing an Eskimo roll. Alright, the third thing is that you put weight on your feet. 
If you're slicing at the right angle and your weight's over the boat but the bow still doesn't go under, it's probably because you're lifting up on your knees instead of pushing down with your feet. Think of your feet as pushing the bow under you. Last but not least, your paddle needs to be in the right position. Notice when you lift the bow up and when you push the bow down, the paddle is out and away from the boat. This gives you a little bit more leverage, but also gives you a little bit of extra support in case your balance isn't just perfect.